Now Noah has already given us a good bit of information in his ticket, but let's give him a call anyway just to be sure he's still having a problem. Once we get him on the phone, we'll say something like, Hi Noah, I'm looking at your trouble ticket and I just wanted to see if you're still having an issue. Can you please tell me what's going on? And Noah says, Well sure, uh, like I said, I was on vacation last week and now I can't get to the intranet site, but I can get to sites on the internet like Google. Okay, so at this point we've confirmed the problem does still exist, and we have a clear picture of what it looks like. He cannot get to the intranet site, but sites on the internet are working. It also sounds like Noah is a pretty advanced user who's probably a little more computer savvy than average because he volunteered a lot of this information that we normally would have had to ask for explicitly. Before we begin troubleshooting, let's look back at the network topology diagram one more time. As I pointed out already, Noah's computer has both an IPv4 and an IPv6 address assigned. If you look over at the branch office where the intranet server is, we can see that it also has both IPv4 and IPv6 addresses. So how does Noah's computer try to connect to the intranet site? Does it use IP version 4, IP version 6, or does it use both? Well, by default, the Windows operating system will give precedence to IPv6. In other words, it will try to use IPv6 wherever possible unless we explicitly tell it to use IPv4. When we isolate the network layer, we need to check both IP version 4 and IP version 6. So let's go ahead and do that now. We can see here that Noah was trying to get to the internet site and obviously it's not working. So the next thing we want to do is establish whether physical and layer 2 connectivity are working. And since Noah said that internet is working, we can actually test both layer 1 and layer 2 by pinging a site on the internet and see if it works. So we can go ahead and ping Pluralsite.com, for example. And here, since we get a response, we know that layer 1 and layer 2 are working. So that leaves us with layer 3. Now since the intranet site is accessible via IPv4 and IPv6, we need to just start with IPv4. Windows 7 uses IPv6 by default, so we need to first ping the IPv4 address using ping-4 intranet.netluxy.com. Now we see this reply from 10.10.1.252, destination host unreachable. 10.10.1.252 is the device telling us that it does not know how to reach the network that the intranet server is on. So we've isolated the problem to layer 3. Now the next question is, what is 10.10.1.252? That device is not on our topology diagram. So let's do a trace route. We'll do a trace route-4-d intranet.netluxia.com and it shows the first top as 10.10.1.252 and then destination host and reachable. So it appears that 10.10.1.252 is actually configured as the default gateway. So let's check this. Earlier in the course, we looked at the local area connection properties to check the IP settings. But there's another way we can check these settings, including the gateway, and that's by using the net shell. To access the net shell, we just type N-E-T-S-H and hit enter. And we'll type interface IPv4 and then show config. And it is in fact 10.10.1.252. Well is this correct? Well no, it should be 10.10.1.254. So we need to change this. So let's go back to the local area network connection settings and change the default gateway under our IPv4 properties. And then we'll go back to the command prompt and try it again. We'll exit out of the net shell and then type ping-4 intranet.netluxia.com. And we're still getting a reply from 10.10.1.252 with the same destination host and reachable message. Now I want you to brainstorm for a moment and think about what could be the cause here. Is there a problem with the default gateway? Maybe somebody disabled IP routing functionality on Switch 1. Now think back to the original trouble ticket. Noah said that nobody else around him is having this problem. 
but they all use the exact same gateway, 10.10.1.254, and none of them have reported any issues. So what is going on here? Well, we need to follow the troubleshooting methodology. We need to back up and isolate the network layer again. Why? Well, because we made a change. We changed the default gateway, but it does not seem to have fixed the issue. So we need to go back to layer two and check that this default gateway, switch one, is actually reachable. So we're gonna do an ARP-A. And we see here that 10.10.1.254 shows a MAC address of AABBCC800300. Is this the correct MAC? Well, we don't know. It could be. Our topology diagram doesn't say, and we don't have access to switch one to verify what its MAC address actually is. But notice that this is a static ARP entry. Now normally an ARP entry would just be dynamic because it's dynamically learned from the other devices on the LAN. Having a static ARP entry is not necessarily abnormal, but considering that we just changed the default gateway, we probably should not have a static ARP entry for it. This entry should be dynamic. But as long as this static entry is here, Windows will not dynamically change it. So we need to delete the static entry. And the way we'll do that is by typing ARP-D, which will delete all of our ARP entries, including the dynamic ones. And then we'll type ping-4 intranet.netlexia.com. Now it works. Great. So let's verify by browsing to the site again. And it works. Okay, now hold on a minute. Didn't we say earlier that Windows will prefer IPv6? How do we know that we're not reaching this site through IPv6? After all, the intranet site does use IPv6, and we know that we can ping the intranet site using IPv4, but how do we know Internet Explorer is not using IPv6? Well, the answer is, we really don't. So we need to troubleshoot IPv6. But before we do that, Let's finish up our IPv4 troubleshooting by isolating the cause of the problem that we just resolved. 